I think we're on. Good morning and welcome to this live webinar. I'm Levi Sim, your host of photofocus.com, and I am joined today by my pal and compatriot and co-author, Robert Vanelli. Vanelli, V, Mr. Vanelli. <laughs> welcome to the show. That was a long intro. Hi, Levi. It was, it was a lot. <laughs> I didn't even say anything about you yet. Uh, well, and so let me say something. If if you haven't met Vanelli or know Vanelli, you've probably seen his work around. He has some incredible portraiture. Is is what Vanelli is well known for, especially um, well finished and well shot sports portraiture. Would you say is is that is that what you're making your a name for yourself with? Uh, yeah, and we'll do that in teaching, of course. As well, and, and teaching, and I say sports, but really oh, your, your work portrait. applies to um, really cool dramatic work as well. Like you've got the Aviator. I mean, everybody knows the Aviator. I was at I was at On One Software's headquarters the other day, and there's the Aviator hanging on the wall. <laughs> so uh, Vanelli is is internationally acclaimed, and I'm glad he's here joining me. And today we are here to show you. How to use perfectly clear. If you've got questions, we want them. That's the idea here, is to have a Q&A, question and answer session with you. And so here's how you can ask us questions. If you are watching this on PhotoFocus, you need to click the little button in the, in the corner of the, of the video viewer that says YouTube and head over to YouTube. Because if you're on the YouTube page, you'll see a little chat window right next to your um, right next to the video player on the right side. And right there, you can leave us some questions. You can also say hello, make a comment, um, but especially ask us questions right there. And we will do our best to answer them. Um, hey, V, you ever, you ever listen to the, the Car Talk guys? No. On NPR? They've got that, that show where they take callers. No? Okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> Yeah, oh no, it's good. It's 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 hilarious. It's hilarious. But they have a section. So they have a section called "Stump the Chumps," and they try to <laughs> they they see if if their answers <laughs> that they gave people were right. So on that show, people call up and say, "I've got this problem with my car," and they try to explain it to them, and then they tell them an answer. Um, in this show, you can call us. You you can leave us a question right now, and we will. Um, Give you, we'll, we'll demonstrate for you live the answer on the video, unless you stump us, and then we'll get to it next week, because we're doing this next week too. Anyhow, you need to leave us a question and say hello, just like Cecil and Alan and Thomas and Charlie have all done, because when you leave a question or a comment, you're also entering yourself in the drawing for a complimentary copy of Perfectly Clear Complete. And it is a powerful tool, which we will start demonstrating here in a sec. And so just leave us a comment, say hello, leave a question, and that will enter you in the drawing. Um, so, V, do you have any wait. questions about Perfectly Clear? Do I? <laughs> well, in all honesty, for everyone, um, like, like Cecil has been to some of the workshops. Yeah. Uh, we, you and I were out of Chicago, Levi and I. What I don't think people realize is it's uh, not just perfectly clear, but all of it's constantly evolving. And you and I will just sit down at lunch and I'll ask you questions. Hey, Levi, how did you do this with one of your editing tools? Um, some people like using perfectly clear in the very beginning of their edit. And then some people like using it at the very end of their edits. Mm -hmm. Some people like to use it in the beginning, which I do, and then do your edits at the very last moment before you send it to the client. You run it through one more time just to be on the safe side. Um, right, and so it always ends up looking a little better. Yeah, but there's yeah. just a ton of stuff. Or like Rich, our producer, um, was telling me that we could use perfectly clear up to, was it three or three to five times in one smart object, you could, which I didn't realize. So in the oh. past, and I'll show you some of that in a moment, you, you actually have different levels of perfectly clear inside your smart object, uh, which yeah. I didn't even think about until he brought that up to our attention. So that's why we love these questions, because then when you ask the questions, we have to find the answers. Excellent. Excellent. And so Perfectly Clear Complete can be picked up at athentech.com. 
And if you head over there, you'll also see that there's a brand new product called Perfectly Clear Essentials. Essentials, thank you. We've got complete and we've got essentials. And the essentials has all the power of Perfectly Clear, but it doesn't have the portrait retouching tools. And so if you're not a portraitist and you don't you you'd like to utilize this tool, but you don't you don't want to pay a few bucks more for for the portrait tools, you can get just the essentials package and utilize all the all the great tools for right. and, and color and contrast. You also you can also that's good. You could also get um, uh, presets for a portrait, right. stuff, but it's a one click, one click, yeah, preset. Right. Yeah, it's cool. So, um, well, V, let's uh, let's do a demonstration while we are waiting for questions from the audience. Um, what would you would you like to start, or shall I start, V? Um, you know, what we'll do since we just came back from out of Chicago. I've got a Chicago picture ready to go too. Have you got one? Do you have one from out of Chicago? I do. I, how about you go? How about you grab yours first? Okay, I'll do mine first. I'm going to share my screen here. Do you see my screen, V? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. So what I've got here is a HDR I shot uh, from. A lamp post on State Street. I was just about to ask okay. you that. Come on. <laughs> I've got I've got my platypod sitting <laughs> on top of a crosswalk signal of and so so it let me do um, a long exposure uh, time or not time lapse, but just longer exposures for my HDR and uh, put them all together. I put them together using Lightroom. And then I also used the lens baby. Edge 50 for for the or excuse me Edge 80 for the photograph and there we go and so I've got this slice of focus going across the sign and then you can see the slice travels back and and this side this theater sign over here got in focus too so I'm going to crop that out eventually and then um, when it put together the HDR, it, it moved some things a little bit. And so, because I was using the uh, ghost reduction setting, so it, it's got this white border around part of it. So I'll crop that out, of, that out eventually too. But what I like to do is when I, whenever I go to any kind of plugin, whether it's perfectly clear or Mac fun or anything, I start with my largest uncropped photo first. Um, I can always come back to that and change like like if somebody wants to buy an eight by ten, I can uncrop to an eight by ten. Or if they want to buy a sixteen by nine, I can recrop to a sixteen by nine. So I always like to start with my largest uncropped photograph first. And then I'm in Lightroom, so I'm just gonna all I have to do is right click on my photograph and choose edit in, and then choose edit in perfectly clear. And it creates a new copy for me, and it's gonna take us into perfectly clear complete. Now I'm going to choose, I've got options right here to use either a TIFF or a PSD or a JPEG for my finished file format. Again, this is creating a new file. So my original raw photo stays right here in Lightroom and it creates a new picture for me to work on. I just, I kind of like the PSD format. So I'm just going to choose PSD. I'm going to choose Pro Photo RGB as well because that gives me the maximum amount of colors to work with. Uh, as well as as tonality to work with in the in the editor if I chose sRGB you know and and I may not even notice it but but the fact is there's a lot more color available in this pro photo RGB so I'm going to choose that one now at export I'm going to reset that to sRGB when I export this photograph to share online because otherwise it looks poor because the online viewers don't um, show pro photo RGB. I just wrote an article about this and it's totally boring, but kind of important. So if you're interested in, in color space, you can check that out. Also choose 16 bits because you get a lot more color and brightness information. Um, like an eight bit photo, I, I, I just wrote this article V, so take your finger off your nose. <laughs> <laughs> but the eight bits, when you use an eight bit um, editing, you you've got 16 million colors to work with. When you use 16 bits, 
you have 281 trillion colors to work with. And so choose that one because <laughs> you get a lot more opportunity with them. Um, it may not be important. Like my eyeballs can't really see 16 million colors, let alone 281 trillion colors. It makes me happy to know that it's available there. Oh man, there's a new. <laughs> yeah, I, I just did mine this morning. <laughs> oh yeah, well I, I double checked mine last night and there wasn't one. So um, I'm gonna say remind me later, but there's an update and I love perfectly clear because it, it reminds me that there's a new update. I'm, oh man, I can't believe. Now I'm outdated. Everything I'm teaching is, is outdated today. Uh, well, we'll see about that. Although I, I think I think I got a little hitch. I'm going to cancel this real quick and go back. Oh, I was on the wrong screen. Man. Sorry, guys. Here we go. Edit in. Perfectly. No. Put the wrong one. Cancel. Edit in. This is live demonstration foibles. Edit the original this time, since I've already got the PSD created. And now it's going to remind me again that there's an update, I think. But it'll bring my picture right over, too. V, have I fouled up something? Nope. I thought for sure I was going to see a photograph here. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, V, do you have one ready to go? Yeah, you know what I do? I'm going to update my thing. Here's all the thing. Go us. <laughs> okay, take it away, V. Oh, man. How embarrassing. Not a problem. Let me share my screen. All right. And yep, your screen is Sharon. Got it? Yes. All right. Can you see it? I can. Is that okay. Seth? Yep. This right. is our good old buddy, Seth. Oh, oh my God! He 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 quickly became one of my uh, best friends there at Photo at, out of Chicago. So I right, so here's Seth, and what we did was um, we had I don't know how many stations, which was pretty cool. They had stations all over the place and out of Chicago. Levi was doing his Steve Jobs portrait, um, and since we didn't have portrait sports, I decided to do my grit portraits with photographers using their camera gear. So. This awesome. is how I use perfectly clear in connection to my sports grip. So I'm going to come over here for one moment, look at um, development. And here's the grip look that I usually use. Boom. Full screen. Can you see full screen? Oh, nice. All right. And then that looks good. So that was just a one click done. It looks good. If we're doing batch processing, I would do that. All right. Let's un. Uh, let's re reset this. There. So now what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to edit this inside Photoshop first, and I'll show you why I'm doing that. So as Photoshop pops up, now my Photoshop window is coming up. It is, but uh, V, you're, you're, I, I don't think it's just me. I think you're cutting out just a little bit. All right, I'll talk uh, slow. <laughs> Do you have anything else running that we need to cancel in there? Nope, that's it. Okay. All right, now, can you see? Um, you can, we can see Seth. Yes. Good. Now, from here, I'm going to uh, go to filter, perfectly clear. And once perfectly clear kicks in, since it's a male portrait, I don't want to do a whole bunch of um, skin softening like I would for a female portrait. Right. So automatically, it comes in, and whatever was the last preset you used shows up. So in this case here, uh, the auto one just popped in. Now already, look at the difference between the two. Oh, nice. So in, what I want to do, though, is I'm going to come over here, and let's say we did beautify. Now, Seth is a... I'm not liking what it's doing to his skin because I just did the one click here. So what I'm going to do instead is come over. And if I look, let's say I don't need red eye reduction. Dark circles under his eyes looks pretty good. 
his face. Now there was a comment earlier and, and people were asking, can it detect multiple faces? And the answer to that is yes. So in this case here, um, it didn't detect his face. That's why I chose this image. But what I wanna do is I wanna manually select it. So I'm gonna click once, twice, and apply. Now I found his face. So that's, I mean, that was one of the new features they added uh, not too long ago, which I thought was really cool. So now that I have- Yeah, that is cool. Set, set, uh, I'm gonna come over here and his skin, I'm gonna bring it down just a bit. That, good. Now that I have it all set, and let me get rid of this and zoom back out so you can see it. Good, all right, so before, and after. So look, look at just that one little click, the change that it did. Now, from here, again, because we're, we're doing a live webinar, what I would do is I would take my time and I would come back in and say, okay, I really like how everything is looking. Um, maybe for this set here, actually, let me see if I did it over here already. Under vanilla, you know? All right, so what I would do over here is I, I would look at Seth and say, okay, I did all of these images on the same background, the same day, the same settings and everything, so I could create a quick preset. So for, for this particular image, I like how everything's looking. I'll come down and I'm gonna create a preset under Vanelli. And my preset's gonna be, let's say, um, out of Chicago. And so now that I have that set, hit okay, now I have it down here in my presets. So out of Chicago men is gonna appear up here. So if I were to do a batch processing or if I had let's say five or six other images that are just of men, once I open up perfectly clear, whether it's in Lightroom or in Photoshop, all I have to do is click on either men or, woman, or women and it'll apply it. So now we hit apply. Yeah, and and interesting, so there's a couple of questions popping up right now too related to this. You you mentioned about it recognizing faces and Tony is asking, can it recognize multiple faces and can you edit them individually? And Alan says, is there any real advantage to using it in Lightroom rather than Photoshop or is it just personal preference? And so one big benefit of using it in Photoshop is that if, if I have multiple people in a photograph, some people need to be affected more you know, if I, if I want to put the, the smoothness slider way up, it's going to affect all those faces in that picture the same. So if I instead create a new layer, affect that layer with a higher level of, of, uh, of smoothness, and then just paint that person back in, you, you know, and then use an adjustment layer to, uh, or excuse me, a layer mask to paint that, that person face back in at a, at a greater strength. Does that make sense? Maybe I better demonstrate. Okay, so, that. so we'll, we'll translate that real quick to what Levi is trying to delicately say is let's say you have one person with lots of wrinkles <laughs> and they look really bad. The Florida sun just made their skin look like leather. And then you have somebody cute like Levi standing next to them. You don't want the person to feel bad. Um, so you would, you would go overboard on the skin retouching on just that person, but you would do it to both to Levi and to the other person. And then with, layers you would paint out the effect on levi How's that so this, is a, this is a foible i make all the time v about thinking about doing something instead of showing how to do it so i'll, I'll cue mine up and we'll see if i can launch it before we switch back to me all right um, so now that, you're right so now that we have um seth i have him set i love what it did to the eyes it just made the eyes pop even more now i'm going to save it once i save the image and my screen is still being shared, correct? Yes. Oh, Levi, Levi, Levi. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> Save. Oh, it's currently being saved. There we go. I, whew, it's saved. Now that it's saved, I'm going to go back into um, Lightroom, and you'll notice it added the extension PSD. Now, I per you could you could have. Um, and you can export it out to a TIFF or to a JPEG. Personally, I like using PSD for this. 
So now that I have it set, now I'm going to run my sports grid log. And there he is. And since the color space is a little bit different, and the temperature, and now I have that look that I was going for. So here we are with Seth. And I'm going to dial back some of the settings just a touch. Here we go. And we're set. Boom. All right, so there we are. So that was that was just another way of me using perfectly clear to enhance the eyes, to get the eyes looking the way I wanted to, to get the skin softened, to make sure that his tattoos really, really pop with the extra colors. And then I applied my my preset inside Lightroom. How's that leave? Right on. You good? That sounds good. That's good. Yeah. Um, All right, Steph. I've got perfectly clear working in my in my Photoshop. Shall we switch over to mine? Yep. Make it work this time. All right. So, here, oops, what did I just push? Okay. Here, do you see my screen, V? Yes. Uh, did I mute myself, V? Yep. I saw your screen now. It's doing the. Uh... Oh, you saw my screen. Okay. Yeah. Can Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so I've got this couple here. And what I want to do, first thing, first thing I've done is just created a new layer. I layer from the background layer. I just press Command J to do that. And I've done it again there on the bottom right. And then the next thing you want to do that gives you a lot of power in Photoshop. And this is this is like one of the main reasons I would use um, Photoshop instead of perfectly clear is because I can turn this, this uh, smart object. And so you just right click on the layer and choose convert to smart object. And now with the smart object, it's kind of like a DNG file in Lightroom. And whatever I do, I can kind of undo without, without making undo steps. And, and that means when we're, oops, when we're working with, uh, with a filter like perfectly clear, it means I can go back to perfectly clear and make adjustments in the same photo, in the same layer with the settings where I left them and not have to start from scratch. Whereas with Lightroom, once I hit save, those settings are, are baked in and that's how it's going to look. And if I reopen it in perfectly clear, I'm starting with the same, with, with the finished picture starting again. But here I get to start with the over and over again if I want to. Does that make sense, V? Yes. <laughs> well, so here I've I've started with my own preset that I've made, and um, I think uh, Anthony was asking us to show again how to make a preset. And it's the same whether whether we're in Photoshop or Lightroom. This window is the same. Like perfectly clear acts exactly the same way for Photoshop. It's only your your interface to get there is different. And so in here, to create a preset, you just click on that button and, and create your preset. You name it, and you can choose an icon for it. You can even add a description for it. So that's how you do that. There's also a button down here on the bottom right where you can click this plus sign and get the same window. Um, so this picture is, I've created a preset with everything turned off. And I like to start this way frequently because it allows me to see what each thing is doing without giving me the automatic settings. You know, I could, I could go back up here and choose Beautify. There we go. And here's before and after with it. And it's looking like it's looking pretty good. It's doing a good job. But I like to start with it myself and, um, and, and build basics. So, Let's, let's do two things here. First, I'll show you how I'm going to retouch this portrait. And then I'll show you how we can retouch the other person in the portrait at a different level. Um, so I'll start with hitting the exposure button. And this is a new feature in Perfectly Clear Complete version 3, the face aware exposure button, because it recognized the bride's face down here. 
it recognizes how bright she needs to be, how, how bright this picture needs to be according to her face. Without the face aware turned on, with that turned off, it makes an adjustment based on the entire photograph, which is too much if we look at this, like, excuse me, without the exposure adjustment and then with the automatic low setting turned on, it's too bright. He, his, his suit should be black and this tree back here should be a lot darker. But when this is this entire photograph, it says, okay, so generally this picture needs to be brighter. But if I say focus on the faces and make them the right brightness, now it's done just that, and, and it gives a very gentle adjustment. And so I, lo I love that new feature. Um, anytime I make a brightness adjustment, I also make a depth adjustment. I think, like, just crank it up here and see what it looks like. So let's go up there, around 50. And then you can switch back and forth between high contrast and high definition. And I think for this one, I like the high contrast look. And we can see before and after either with this little button in the bottom left, that thing, by pressing the space bar, we can see the before and after as well. So there's before and after. Not a lot of change yet because these are the only buttons I've been, been uh, adjusting. This black point works a little differently than black point in it is more of a black's protection. And so when I drag it higher, it makes the, the black areas darker again. And we've got the, the warning buttons we can turn on here too to, to see where lights and, and shadows are getting too bright or not. Now down here in color, I love this because I'm going to turn on fidelity and see how it, how it works. Fidelity tones in purples, greens, and blues in particular. And in this case, it's having a small effect on the tint of his suit. Um, but since there's not really any, any greens or purples in here, we're not seeing a big effect with it. Now, I've got some tint problems here because we're standing in the shade on a sunny day. And so this, the light falling on my subjects is actually coming from the blue sky. And they've got some blue tint on them. And that white stuff you see in there, V, that um, can, that's actual snow. Like we have that in other parts of the country, not, not in Florida, like where you are. That's not, that's not sand, snow on my subjects up here. And so uh, um, I want to make sure that I can conquer that tint problem. And just, just hitting that tint correction button does a great job of it. And it does it without turning everything orange like it would if I, if I use the white balance adjustments in Lightroom. Um, and so, gosh, I like, I like what that does. It gives a little warmth without, without turning them into pumpkins. Say that again, V? I like it. Um, now, this, there's also the sky enhance button. And it is affecting blues in the picture. I don't have any sky, but I do have blue eyes and I've got that blue spruce right behind them. And so we might like to see what it does. It's a bit, turn, turn things up really high to see what they do and then back them off. Okay, Cerulean might be a better choice for a little punch. Oh, I kind of like what that's doing. There's before and after on that. That's not bad. Let's try the aquamarine. Yeah, that, that gives a little, a little punch to the blues without affecting the reds very much, which I like. And after, and look how much more punch and vibrance the color has, but it's not oversaturated. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how perfectly clear does this. And I'm not an engineer, so I don't really care how it does it, but I can tell you that it just makes my pictures look better. Um, there's also one for foliage enhance and let's try let's try the forest green setting here and see if that has so turn down the mahogany down there. It's eh, I don't I don't think I like it. I like the blue tones better than the greens. Now this this one down below affects the red and brown tones in a picture and it could be 
it can be really nice. But in this case, it's turning my bride into a pumpkin. If uh, mahogany does anything better, no. A little sepia. Now that one might be just subtle enough to affect her brown hair without doing anything funky. Now it's getting its tie quite a lot, which isn't the thing I want to pop out. It also makes the pine cones look really good at the tree. Um, I don't think I need that one for this picture. So let's scoot down here. Uh, the sharpening tool is great. I usually tone it down a little bit. And then let's come down here. So it found the bride's face, but it didn't find the groom. So I'm going to, first of all, adjust the bride's face. And then let's manually add the groom's face just in case it works well. And it says, click the left eye, then the right eye. If you do it opposite of that, if you click the right eye first, perfectly clear we'll think the face is upside down. <laughs> two faces so you want to yeah you want to be sure that you click the left eye then the right eye um and oh let me turn off the the points i'm gonna i'm gonna zoom in a little bit see what effect we get on their eyes as we work on this so let's turn on the eye enhance and let's turn on the dark circles and see if we get anything out of that Dramatic change in the oh, bride. Yeah. yeah, dramatic on the bride. But I think I I think it might be reading the groom's face as upside down. It's brightening his eyebrows instead of under his eyeballs. <laughs> let's uh let's adjust that a little bit. Yeah, I <laughs> did I did I click it wrong? I'm gonna reset that face. Did I did I read the thing and then click the wrong ones? Okay, now it recognizes face and it put it right side up. So that's really good. Did I, think I say click you, the left eye and I click the right eye first? I think when you were talking about it, I think you clicked the wrong side. <laughs> I think you're right. Okay, it doesn't, doesn't want me to adjust that face right there. And so much too, there we go. And that's one thing to note. Um, because I talked to the engineers about that. I wanted it dead smack right where it's supposed to be. And they said that was one of the fears is that people don't realize that if it's in the vicinity, it's going to still do it. Um, right. Yeah. And, and, and it's the eye opening, not the eyeball necessarily. And so like if somebody's looking out the side of their eye, you don't, you don't put it right on their, on the center of their pupil. You put it in the center of the eye opening. Turning on the dark circle. There it goes. Now it's working again. And I like what it's doing there too. Um, so there's before and after. Look at their eyes. That's that's looking great. And for me, the way that this dark circles works, it, it reduces the darkness of the lines under the eyes, but it doesn't remove the detail of that feature, exactly. which I think is so important because it's a feature of their faces, but it definitely mitigates the impact of those dark circles. So... That's really cool. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do, let's just see if the face contouring works. I don't think it will. Yeah, it's not because their faces are too close together. Uh, face contouring is able to, sides of the face, something to draw from. It needs some negative space around the face to do it. And since their faces are touching right there, there's, there's not enough room to, um, to pull in on either side. Um, but the lip sharpening may work and the teeth whitening may work as well here. Let's crank now, it up just to see. Yeah, just so everyone oh, yeah. knows, um, what you're really doing is you're showing them, you're showing everyone what you would do in the privacy of your own home with your editing. You would take your time. That's true. One, That's right. I, I wouldn't. So, yeah, so in other no. words, Levi has done this a million times with this particular picture, and I'm sure you made presets for them already. Um, yeah, like exactly. The exactly. So I've got, I've got like a like a bride preset, or I've got like a portrait in the shade preset, and and so the, but this this is this is what all the tools can do for us. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, V. Definitely. Um, and so let's turn on perfectly smooth and get a little smoothness in the skin, and full body subtle. We've got 
we can do the face only, or we can also do super smooth, but I like a really subtle smoothness with the perfectly smooth. But I, I turn up the blemish removal a bit more, which takes care of the, the bigger details, like crinkles around the eyes and things. Um, and then the infrared removal is a really powerful way to reduce redness appearing in skin, like his nose may get some good effect from it. Back a little bit here. And, it, and sometimes the, the ears often have a good effect from this one. Um, I'm not seeing a ton of effect happen right now. And I think it's because I've overloaded my computer, but We'll see if it doesn't catch up in a minute. Oh yeah, that's looking good though. You can see before and after on the bride. That's a pretty significant effect. Um, now, of course, I didn't make one picture of the bride and groom. I made 40 pictures of them standing in the shade in different poses and things. And so this is the perfect time to make a preset called, you know, shady bride or whatever you like to call these things. Yeah. And, I call her a shady bride. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I can, I can choose an icon for it, you know, like, so I cho chose the tuxedo icon. And now that shows up there, up, up here in my presets right there, shady bride. I've got a ton of them already built in here. Um, one other thing I can do for the skin, I might, I might try using the makeup to uh, level out the skin tones. Thing. Let's turn this way up high, and you'll see that it's it's faded their their skin tone a ton, um, but it's also going to apply the the color that I add here. And so I'll choose that as a preset, and then I'll. And there, we'll give it, yeah, and then you, you can just adjust the opacity of it here. But it, it kind of, it desaturates the skin and then adds color back in. And so by doing that, I can remove the, the original color of skin, like a red nose, and then add skin, add, add color back in that's similar to the rest of his face or, or the rest of both their faces. And... Um, it's really cool. That's a, that's a powerful way to, you know, homogenize the skin tone, especially on a cold winter day like this. Um, does that make sense, V? Did I? Yes. Yep, that makes sense. Is, is, that, is that a clear idea? So, okay, let's apply this, and then we'll run it again. And since we, we created the Shady Bride preset, so we can apply the same settings but adjust them for, let, well, let's say the groom's face. Let's, let's do it again on the groom. And so let's go in here. It automatically comes back to Photoshop with, this, with the settings saved right here. So now I'm turning this layer into a smart object. And then we're going to run the filter again on this smart object. V, it is. Man, time is flying by. Do we have do do we have more questions coming in? Nope. I'm we should announce again. Uh, we should announce again that if you leave us a question or a comment right now in the chat window next to the video player in photo in light in YouTube, you will be entered in the um, drawing for a complimentary copy of Perfectly Clear Complete version three, which I'm launching right now from Photoshop. Okay, so let's we'll start with that that zeroed preset so we can see. And then we'll turn on the Shady Bride. Okay, and now I'm gonna focus on the groom and because the bride was looking really good, but I think maybe the groom could use a little more uh, skin tone work. Like maybe if I turn up, what happens if I turn up the infrared removal? 
not seeing a ton of effect there. But another way to do this is using the skin and depth bias up here under tone, which if I turn up, can reduce the saturation in the skin also. And and may be a good way to level out that skin tone. Eh, it's not having, oh, there it goes. It is having a big effect, but it's also affecting the whole photograph uh, contrast. So I'm gonna have to be just a little picky when I blend his face back in. Um, so let's try the skin toning makeup one more time down here. Makeup, skin toning, there we go. Did it recognize his face? That might be why we're not seeing it. Let's add a face now. Okay, click the left eye. Check. Then the right eye. It grabbed them upside down again. Let's reset the faces. There we go. Now it's got them right side up. I did that. Um, but it's working. Let's go down here to the makeup settings again. Oh. Where have I gone? I think I, I think I just uh, accidentally quit. Perfectly clear. Oh, Photoshop quit unexpectedly. Man. Well, <laughs> the, I failed that one again. Man. Things run so smoothly right before we launch the show. Let's uh, let, let's get me off screen. <laughs> <laughs> Pull me off screen quick. That's right. Just just like get the hook. <laughs> um, so, Vanelli, do we have any more questions popping in there? Oh. It would be nice to have a color picker when using the makeup setting. That's a good idea, Steve. So you can actually adjust the hue and saturation and brightness. You could, um, you could dial in some color specifically, but a, a picker would be cool. Um, Jason says this will be noted in our evaluations. We're, we're in trouble. The, I'm in trouble. Your demonstrations have gone great. I'm going to share my screen. All right, show us what you got. Good, are you able to see my screen? Yes. All right, so here we are at a lacrosse game. Um, I'm going to make this real, real quick. I don't have to worry about skin toning or fixing his skin, removing blemishes. So this is not a portrait. What I do want to do is make the blues blue, um, and the, you know the um, purples purple, the gold or the yellow just jumping out at us. So right. instead of going into Photoshop, I'm going to right click. I'm going to add it directly in perfectly clear this time. Now. Excellent. And that's my favorite way to work as well. So from here, um, I'm going to add it with Lightroom Adjustment because I did crop this. And I want it to come back. I have a choice between a TIFF or a JPEG. Well, I know that all of these images are going to be exported out as a JPEG. So um, the Florida Launch can use it for their websites. So I'm going to stick to using it as JPEG. For the color space, honestly, um, how do I say this? I'm kind of frugal with my, my disk space. Uh, the Adobe RGB works great for me. Yes, Profoto um, has a better color space, but I still like working in Adobe RGB and 8-bit. So let's edit in, and it's going to fire up perfectly clear. Now, once perfectly clear is in, let me do this for you. There. Uh, I'm going to do something. There we go. All right. Now, there we go. I wanted to make sure we didn't have the, the last one that I used so you can see the difference. So with this, I created a preset called Sporty Punch. Just so it punches the colors. That just that slight little difference, so before and after. It's not a huge change, but I just I it's my yeah. finishing touch. So you come over here. And if you look, um, it'll tell you the details. There was no noise detected in this photo. So for this particular image, I named it Sporty Punch Color. And what I should have done was added 
no noise. So now I hit save. It takes me back into Lightroom and boom, there's my JPEG with the new image. All right. So now why did I say that noise info? If I come back up here and if I go to the metadata, the game started at seven o'clock at night in Florida. By the time the game ended at 930, the lights totally changed, the stadium lighting came on and so on. So my ISO oh, yeah. was all over the chart. So if you notice over here, I just clicked attribute and I changed this column setting to show me my ISO speed. So I started out with, with ISO um, 560 and I went all the way down as high as 4,000, 2,500 and so on. So now if yeah. I click on the 2,500 ISO, it's going to give me just the images that have 2,500 ISO on them. Now what I can do is, let's say we'll use this one. Uh, actually, that's, a, that's an edited one already, PSD. So let me grab, here we go. So now I have this one here. So what I can do now is add it back in, perfectly clear. And I'm going to add it with Lightroom Adjustment. Everything is still says stays the same. Edit. And once perfectly clear fires up, it's going to give me that last preset that I just ran, which was the Sport Punch, which looks great. Now I'm going to come over here, and let's see if it found the noise. It says noise has been detected. So that's what's really cool about Perfectly Clear. It's intelligent enough to know if there was noise in the picture or if there isn't. So I'm going to click on noise, and the default looks good. I could pick night, but that's going to go overboard with it. So I do like the default one. So now I'm going to zoom in just a touch. What, what Levi? Yes, Florida did win. <laughs> just, just in case you had to ask. Oh, yeah, I was, I was, I was wondering. <laughs> so look, look at the difference here. Just that little extra oomph to it. Now I can come back and, and add another preset. And by the way, I didn't realize, I knew the icons were here, Levi, but honestly, I didn't even think of adding them. So I got that tip. From you. <laughs> look, there's a jersey, man. You can use the jersey. <laughs> so sports punchy color. And we're going to have noise. Where'd you see the jersey? You messed with me. Was it really a jersey? Yeah, there's a jersey right there next to the cat. Oh, you're right. All right, there we go. Hold on. <laughs> and the basketball, the soccer ball. All right. Now I put it in the wrong spot. Can I drag it? Oh, you can't. Sweet. So I'm going to drag and drop it. Or can I? Yes. Oh, that is so cool. Okay, so I put it in the wrong spot, <laughs> and I was able to just click on it and drag it down to the spot I wanted. So now that I have this set, I hit OK, yeah. or save rather, and boom, it's in. So now, why is this important? Well, I'm going to select all of those images that are 2,500 ISO. This time, export, and I'll click on export here. What I want to do now is use perfectly clear, and I'm going to select Um, the the, Sports, the sporting noise. So, and I have it right here. Now what I can do is come back down, and I can send it to uh, RGB or I'm sorry sRGB because again they're using it for the web. I'm going to bump it up to 100 uh, percent. A JPEG. I could in here if I wanted to reset the sizes, you know, to where let's say the, the long edge is um, uh, let's say what 1024. Whatever the dimensions that they give me, I can add all this stuff in here. And I can also come up and I'm going to choose a folder that I want this to be exported. I can say a specific folder or choose a folder for later. If I choose the folder for later, 
it'll let me pick whichever folder I want to save those to. So now by doing that preset or by creating that preset inside perfectly clear, I'm able to take all of these images that we have here. And I'm, what I'm able to do now is, let me take that off. There we go. Now what I'm able to do is take all of those images that are the high ISO, apply that preset, it saves it as a JPEG, puts it in that one folder. Then I can come back over here, and let's say 1600 ISO, it'll give me 62 images. Then from there, if I created a preset based on that ISO setting, I can export them that way too. So it just streamlined, you saw how fast that was, um, being able to just streamline what we just did. Yeah, that's really terrific. And that's, that's one of my very favorite things as well about Perfectly Clear is that we can batch edit like that. I can take, um, well, you, did, you, you can do a whole sports shoot. I do a whole session of headshots. I shot 90 headshots in a day, and I, I put everybody through there with presets, and they were ready to go just fast. Um, yeah. no, when, I hear, work when I hear my friend, I hear some of my friends, or I look in the chat rooms, that oh, I'm going to spend all night editing. Right. Really? You have children. You have a wife. No wonder why you're sleeping on the couch. No. <laughs> um, why are you spending the entire night editing? And when I find out the stuff that they're doing, it just blows my mind. While well, I'm hand every single um, blemish on a person's face. And then I asked them, it was for a wedding. And I said, okay, well, when you hand those to your client, are those every image they're going to receive? Mm -hmm. Well, no, they're just selecting from them. I'm like, what the heck? So you're spending all that time just on yeah. images that are going to be deleted afterwards. That they may um, not even buy. Yeah. Exactly. Right. You know, run it through perfectly clear. You know, and then when the bride and groom says, oh, my God, I love these images. I want this one, this one, and this one. Then if you want to go back in and fine-tune it, have at if you want to do high frequency separation and so on. But I found perfectly clear does all that for me. Yeah, I love that workflow. Um, I've just posted a link in the chat that'll take you to um, an, an announcement that just launched today about the new version of perfectly clear, two new versions, and a free version, and a bunch of free presets and looks on Photo Focus. And um, Steve is asking, what is Perfectly Clear Essentials? I'm, I'm sorry it won't activate. It, it is a brand new product, and so I don't know if that's why or if, if there's some other thing. I do know that Perfectly Clear's customer service is really good. So we might try that, Steve, if, if, uh, if you don't get it working. Give them a call. They're, and you know what? it's Canadian Something company, so they're really smiley, too about it yeah um, so somebody, somebody asked earlier about what's the difference between on one and perfectly clear yeah yeah oh i was gonna get to, i was gonna get to that one next but bef before you do that i was just gonna say that the perfectly clear essentials is everything that we've been showing you without the the portrait retouching stuff without the skin and the face and the the eyes it it doesn't it doesn't include that stuff so it still does all the excellent color contrast and noise and sharpening controls and it is they've got patents for the way that they brighten and and contrast pictures when you brighten a photograph in Lightroom or Photoshop the color becomes desaturated when you brighten a color you know, a photo in perfectly clear the saturation is maintained and that's a patented process that nobody else has and it works really really well so I highly recommend it even if you just do the perfectly clear essentials uh, which is a little bit cheaper than the full version. What is it? I was looking for the cost on that article. I'm sure you'll find it if you click over there. I thought it was 59. Hey, tell, tell us, what do you do with that? Whereas the full version is 129. Yeah. If you do any what kind of portraiture, it's absolutely worth it. What Say was that your again. You, you, you. Uh, so what, what do you do with, do you, do you use on one currently? Have you yeah. been using the so, new um, Photo that, Raw? Do you mind if I share my screen one more time on this one? Do it. All right. So and while while V brings up his screen, everybody remember if you um, question or a comment, you can just say hello, 
that enters you in the drawing for a complimentary copy of Perfectly Clear Complete Version 3. We're going to give away two of those today. And or say hello or comment on Vanelli's um, cartoon sports picture. Oh, you got Go it. ahead, V. All right, so <laughs> I love, I, I turn into a plug-in king. Um, so when people ask me, yeah. well, per, what's the difference between perfectly clear and Topaz? Perfectly clear and on one. It's If you look at it from this perspective, you're a carpenter. How many hammers does a carpenter have? He doesn't just have one. He has several different hammers for depth, several different projects. So uh, to answer the question, I like I use all the plugins. I love them to death. It makes my job easier in Photoshop and in Lightroom. All right. So here is right. you know, here here's Topaz. You can't get this effect in perfectly clear because it's not meant to do cartoons. So I finished this look. Notice it's a PSD, and th that's why um, I like using PSDs as my extensions. Because now if I'm inside Lightroom, I know that this was an edited image. And this is a final one that I sent the uh, to the client. Well, <laughs> what I decided to do is I'm going to edit in perfectly clear again. What I decided to do was fire up perfectly clear just to see one last time how it's going to look. So I brought it in. And there's that sporty punch without noise. That's what made me create this 40 punch look. So this is before, this is after. Look at the difference. So here oh, I yeah. thought it was done, and I was all excited, sent it to the client, and then I ran it through one more time <laughs> through uh, Perfectly Clear, and this sort of produced for me. So oh, yeah. I go, of course, since we're experimenting, um, I, this is the look I ended up going with that I sent them. Right what on. I can do is because for this is a learning exercise, right. We can come over here and just start sliding, moving sliders around. And like Levi said in the beginning, go to an extreme and then dial it back a bit and see what it's doing. Here's my vibrance. Go to an extreme. Yeah. And then dial it back and just see what it's doing here. Good. Color restore. Dial it back. Good. Right about here. And then here's our detail, over sharpening and no sharpening. Look at the difference. Now, and what I think is really cool, not think I know, which is really cool, is in the very beginning when they first came out, they made it to where you couldn't overdo the skin softening. Because that, that was one of the problems I had with another software that I was using. I didn't like the way it looked. It was overboard. Well. Perfectly clear prevented you from doing that. Then after we talked to them about it, they said, you know what? Let's give the person that the extra strength up here to where if you do want to go overboard, you can change it. If you want to go normal where it's supposed to be, it could be here. So what I really love best about this company is they listen to the users. You know, they take our input and they um, they run with it. So here it is before. Yeah. They actively make things better all the time. Exactly. So, and there it is. It I love it. Thanks, V. Cool. That's perfect. So, um, but I, I thought that was really cool because now what I can do is I do all my editing. Let's say in, uh, I start with perfectly clear. Sorry, V. We, we lost you there. Say that again. Oh. It's really cool because. Yeah. Because I, I start with perfectly clear first, do my editing. Then I run it through whether it's Topaz, On1, whatever I want to do, Photoshop, Lightroom. Then at the very end, just before I hand it off to the client, I'll run it one more time just to see if there's something I missed. That's perfect. Um, and similarly, along, along the, those lines that you were talking about with plugins and things, the On1 is completely different. You know, it's it's a completely different thing, and so are like Topaz and and all the other wonderful tools that are out there. Yeah, and yeah. Um, but I always use Perfectly Clear. Sometimes I use those others, and Perfectly Clear. I've used many of the portrait retouching software out there. Uh, it's different different applications out there. Perfectly Clear is the best that I've that I've used. 
right. it's yeah. so fast and so subtle and it just looks good every time. And the batch, I mean, the batch processing is the best thing about it. And you don't have to, like we, we move the little eye dots into the right place, but that's not necessary in every portrait. Um, it's, it's rarely necessary. And, and so because of that, we can do batch processing on headshots, on close-up portraiture, and it is automatically and makes them look great. And I don't know of any other tools that do it, and especially that well. So, hey, um, Levi, can I bring up a portrait real quick? Yeah. Okay. While you get it up, I'm going to tell Anthony that um, crashed a few minutes ago on me. I did not lose. I, I lost my work in perfectly clear, perfectly clear dig, dig close, but. Um, my smart objects and everything that I had done to the file that far preserved and, and opened back up with Photoshop. So. Gotcha. All right, Gary, what are the best one or two plugins for landscapes and street photography? I like perfectly clear for making my pictures look good. The other plugins also have effects. Make things look cool. Perfectly clear makes my picture look great. Other plugins make my pictures look cool. Yeah, so, well, so I guess, I don't know. No, okay, you know what, now that you said that, finger on my nose, um, I'm thinking, <laughs> uh, let me show my scroll one second. Yeah, now, now that you just said that, I think perfectly clear is more like a Lightroom per se, to where it's meant for development for photographers. It's meant to fix your images, to enhance them, to get them ready, to do something in Photoshop, and it like Photoshop. That's what I would say too. You have all these other plugins, all right? So let me go back to sharing the screen again. All right, so here we go. Having said that, Gary, if I had to choose one, I think I would probably choose Luminar personally, which is they're they're also a, a marketing partner on Photo Focus, but I really like it, and it's inexpensive, and it's intuitive, and it works really really well. So I, I would look into Luminar. Yeah, Luminar for your HDR stuff. No, for no, that's Aurora for HDR. Oh. Luminar is for everything. Like it's got effects, it's got um, brightness adjustment. Like it, if you don't use Lightroom, you could use Luminar instead. Lightroom has a catalog and things, but if I didn't need the catalog, I would just use Luminar yeah. for all I my, see what you're my finishing. And then for, see, well, so, okay, so uh, AC Viewers is another one, but um, AC I, I, right. I've gotten so I've gotten so hooked on perfectly clear that when we do workshops, and if I can't access the internet, I'm kind of lost, and I have to go back to the old style. All right, so let, here, here's a shot of um, one of our models. Um, let's see, Angelina, let's see. I'm gonna convert it to a smart object. And the reason why I did that is if you look really, really close, we kind of um, we kind of used a fan on set, and the fan went everywhere. All right. right, so I'm going to double click on my smart object. And when I double click on my smart object, there we go, I'm going to open up a new window. And now I'm not going to go through every one of these. You know, I'm going to fix them eventually. I fixed all of it eventually. But just for the sake of this demonstration, this is what I'll do. I'm going to just remove, let's say, uh, one of these here. Good, so remove the hair strand. And in the process, I'm damaging the skin. Right. Right. Copying and pasting from supply cells. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's do one more. Man, I'm doing a hack job on this, but <laughs> well, I'm, I'm using my tablet. There we go. Yeah, okay. that's hard. Now, notice what I did do, though. There we go. Notice I did do all that on a separate layer this way. Yeah. So this would be before and after. But actually, it was Rich Harrington that showed me that. I usually just copy this, Control-J, and then make all my changes and stuff. Um, but he showed me how doing it on a blank layer actually shows me all of my changes, which is pretty cool. All right, so I have yeah. it set. Now I'm going to save it. Just to keep the speed going. I'm going to go back to the original. And, oh, there it is. Look how great that looks. Ready? Filter. 
I am perfectly clear. Now, since it's a smart object, perfectly clear is gonna make this a smart filter. So yep. let's go to beautify. Look at that. Look how beautiful that looks. Awesome. And then Levi, you were mentioned earlier about the face contouring. Yeah. Now, one thing, and here's my general rule when, when you're editing, if the girl's mother can't recognize her, you're going too far. If you edited this so much that, that the mother can't recognize this girl, then your, your editing went way, way, way too far. So dial it back. In her case, I'm looking at her. I mean, she's beautiful. If I wanted to touch that in just a little bit because it may be lens distortion, look at the difference before and after. Now watch. Yeah. Why? Now, that's great. Perfectly clear. Did it may be lens really distortion. It may be Thanksgiving dinner. Say again. It may be lens distortion. It may be Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> All right. So now, here's why I, I kept this as a smart object. So you saw what we did over here, and we fixed it. Well, let's say we want it. Well, not, let's say I do have to do the rest of these, but I don't have time to do all of them, you know, during the during the um, during the seminar. But here, if I go back in and I start fixing certain areas again. Yeah. Good. I'll just do a couple. Good. And one more just for dramatics. Okay, let's get this one out of her face. Now, by the way, this would have been a reshoot. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, so there we go. All right, so right. You, would have, you would have taken another photo on site. Yeah. There we go. All right, so now, now okay, that good. I have the set, yeah. once I save it, watch what happens. It's taking this time, taking this time, because now perfectly clear. So now that you saw the changes I made. On the here, other file, yeah, on the main file. Yep, so here we are. So that was a new change here. So now if you look at the main file, boom, they're gone. Yeah, that's cool. V. I didn't I didn't realize that. I I've been using it backwards. Oh, yeah. So yeah, so I yeah, so I like using it here. So that yeah. this way, you know, or here, here's another example. Um <laughs> that was when she was younger, she says. So, right. Um, and of course, before I would do any of this, I would ask her permission if she wanted me to remove, um, if she wanted me to remove the, the tattoo, or if the client said, hey, you know what, you really have to remove that tattoo, we don't want it in the picture. Right. Look, oh, there it goes. Her mother's happy. No. And then you hit save there, and then it pops up. Runs again. Oh, good call. Okay, so there we go. All right, so there we are here. And again, before and after. Once I save it, it's going to take just a little longer because it's rerunning itself. It's recalculating the changes it made. Yeah, right it's, back, it's, it saving, it's saving in Photoshop, and then it's also launching perfectly clear in the background and running it again. Exactly. So there's, I, I just absolutely love what it does to the eyes. So, all right, boom, stop sharing. There we go. Right, how was that, Levi? Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. That was, that was really good. Thank you. I, I learned a lot from that one. I'm going to go pick up my daughter from art camp. So <laughs> we need to pick some winners for today's um, For, for tuning in and, and joining us here um, and drawing from our random prize generator. Our first winner is Michael Friedman. And our second winner is go. On. Our second winner is Steve Drury. Oh, but Steve already left. So our second winner is Mr. Daigle, Mrs. Daigle, L. Daigle. So if you guys will both please leave us a, uh, just, just send me an email 
Levi at photofocus.com. I will send you a license code for Perfectly Clear, and you can get rocking and rolling with that. And V, where can we catch up with you when you're not doing live webinars? Um, photofocus.com. Uh, where both of us do a lot of our writing there. Uh, Vanelli and Friends. And we're doing a new um, Vanelli and Friends workshop going to the Bahamas. So we're taking a cruise oh, good. that leaves out of Port Canaveral, Florida. And we're right. going to spend four days totally immersed into photography. And actually, I'm going to be teaching perfectly clear on the cruise. So what we do is we, we cruise to a destination, the Bahamas. And while we're cruising, we'll do a bunch of editing. And I'll show people the powers of um, perfectly clear Photoshop and Lightroom, and of course, lighting tips. So when we get to the islands, they already have stuff in their head on how they want to edit certain images. Excellent. And then go out and shoot from there. That sounds like fun. Uh, where can we find details on that? Yeah, VanelliandFriends.com. Perfect. And uh, I'm teaching in Montana next month during the eclipse, and we will be going to uh, the Tetons to photograph. And we'll be photographing horsing and horseback riding and night sky photography and all kinds of wonderful things all week long. And details for that are at ninequartercircle.com. Spell out the, the word nine, N-I-N-E, quarter circle. Dot com will be at the nine quarter circle ranch in and it is a wonderful place and we're going to head up there and uh have a lot of fun so i'd love to see you that for that and otherwise you can find me on photofocus.com as well as instagram at photo levi and we'd love to hear your comments and if you'll join vanelli and i will be back on again next wednesday answering more questions about perfectly clear and doing other demonstrations. And so we are, and, and some of the things we'll be doing specifically, we'll do batching in Photoshop, we'll do some more batching from Lightroom, and we'll do um, some more landscape as, as well as nature work uh, on the photographs and show you some of the some of the differences between perfectly clear essentials and perfectly clear complete to seeing you then. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. And uh, we will catch you next time. Thanks a ton, V. Hey, thanks. See you guys soon. All right. Bye now.